I see God, and I thank God that um, not only will you hear it, but CDs go out, and people on Facebook will hopefully tune in some. We usually get quite a few views um, on Facebook, so I praise God for anyone who's ministered to, because that's what it's all about. So tonight, Lord, I praise you, I worship you, and I thank you for this opportunity to speak a word in season, Lord. I thank you that you've equipped me, you're equipping me, you're called me, and I'm utterly dependent on you, God. I know without you I can do nothing. So prepare our hearts here tonight. Precious Holy Spirit, pierce our hearts with the truth we need to hear tonight. Lord, every one of us and anyone watching by Facebook or who will hear this CD, may you touch us in a way we each need minister to. And we'll give you all the glory and all the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How many like to hear God's voice? It's awesome, isn't it? I've walked the Lord a long time, and there's nothing more exciting to me than to hear God speak to me, whether it's by the Word or by the Spirit. So, and I sometimes say, God, what is man that you're mindful of him? Because it's so amazing to me. Well, Robert Morris told a story recently that was, illustrates kind of what I'm talking about. He was in New, in New Zealand with his wife, and they were ministering, and they were in a restaurant with other pastors and uh, on a break, and he was drawn uh, to this one waitress, and the Lord said, you need to invite her to church. Well, he didn't do it. He sat there and ate. It was real busy, and then she wasn't the waitress that ended up giving him their paycheck, so their bill. So uh, he went on out to the parking lot, and they were talking, you know, outside, and then the Lord said, you're supposed to invite her to church. So he thought, all right, I know that's God. I, I know I've had these experiences, you know, when God keeps knocking and you just have to do what he said. You know, so he went back in the restaurant. And he asked for that waitress, and they said, well, she's on break. And he said, will you get her off break? I need to talk to her. So she came to talk to him. And he said, I just feel God wants me to invite you to church. She goes, oh, I'm so glad you did that. She said, we've only been here three months, and we've been talking about how we would like to go to a church and meet some people. So, wasn't that awesome? He was obedient. He went back in there, and he heard the nudging of the Lord to go and speak to her, and that's what he did. And it was perfect because it's what she needed, right? It was, but see, we can miss those opportunities, can't we? we? Because they're just gentle little nudges by the Spirit. They're not like knocking you over the head a lot of times. So when God speaks, we need to obey, right? Had he not obeyed, and it's very easy for us not to obey, then this woman would not have been invited to church. Maybe she wouldn't have come to know the Lord. We don't know. But most of us want to hear from God, whether it's through the Logos Word, which God primarily speaks through this, or it's through the Rhema Word. The Lord confides in those who fear Him, Psalm 25, 11 says. He makes His covenant known to them. Well, I don't know about you, but I love to hear that God is going to confide in me. I think that's awesome. That's so exciting to me. And God mostly communicates through our word. Many people are waiting for a prophetic word to be spoken. I believe God does use prophetic words. He uses me at times in prophetic words. But I tell you, God mostly speaks through his Logos word. But he also speaks by the Spirit, which is what happened with Robert Morris. He spoke and nudged him and spoke in his mind. In his mind. Words came into his mind. So when we talk about God speaking, my first point is probably one of the most important points tonight. God speaks from who he is, from who he is. And it's very important for us to get, because a lot of people can speak to you, and you can hear all kinds of messages today. We're inundated with messages, right? All kinds of things, all kinds of media things. But when God speaks, he's speaking from who he is. And who is he? The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the I am that I am. His character, his attributes back up what he says. So that's why it's so important to say, when God speaks, He's speaking from his nature and his attributes, see? And I think faith is based upon an object, Stanley Horton said. If the object of a person's faith is weak, then that person will have weak faith. But if the object of the person's faith is great, his faith will be great. And who is the object of our faith? When we hear, it's God. He's the object, see? So if he's the object of our faith, he's the one speaking, we can pay attention, right? Because he should get our attention. When Moses, he spoke to Moses with the burning bush, he said, tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. I am that I am. That's all you have to tell him. I am, he says. Isn't that amazing? God. When our president speaks to the nation, 
He has authority and dominion over certain things. He speaks from who he is. Do you get that? So God speaks from who he is. And he is awesome, almighty, omnipotent, omniscient, Amen. El Shaddai God. So you have to understand, if he speaks to you, you need to listen. We need, because God Amen. Almighty, I never will ever get uh, used to uh, the idea that God speaks to me. And I have journals filled with things that God has said to me. Not every day, but from time to time, which he has done. And I'm trying, I'll never take that for granted, see. And when Queen Elizabeth speaks, she speaks from who she is. She has dominion, power. She's the top person in that nation. She speaks from who she is. And so does God. He speaks from who he is. And we need to understand that. By the word of the Lord, by the heavens made, and all the host by the breath of his mouth, he gathers the waters of the sea as, as in a bottle. He puts the deep in storage. Let all the earth fear the Lord, and let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. That's the God we serve. He commanded, and it stood fast. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. Psalm 36, 6 to 9. And all through uh, Jeremiah and Isaiah in the Old Testament, what does it say? Now hear the word of the Lord. Now hear the word of the Lord. The prophet speaking. Now hear the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord is what you're hearing. The Almighty is speaking. And we need to listen. It's so important to understand that when God speaks, he speaks from who he is. And because he's almighty and awesome, he, he has credibility. Whatever he says is true. It doesn't matter what I feel. It does not matter one bit if it sounds crazy, impossible, or anything else. When God speaks, he speaks from who he is. And secondly, when God speaks, he speaks with a purpose. He doesn't just speak. So we feel good. God speaks with a purpose. He speaks all through his word, word of comfort, all through psalm, all kinds of things. But he also speaks with a purpose. When God sent the angel to Gabriel, it was to tell Mary that she would birth the prophesied Messiah that was prophesied 700 years earlier. Mary was spoken to by an angel because God had a purpose. When God speaks, he speaks with a purpose. When God spoke to Moses, as I said, he said, you are to deliver my people out of Egypt. There was a reason God came to speak to him. See, God wants to work throughout the earth. But he's confined to us, except angels. He uses angels. He chooses to move in the earth by prayer, by our prayers. And he chooses to move in the earth by our obedience. So we can miss God by not being obedient or just get in the flesh See, When God spoke to David Wilkerson many, many years ago and told him to go to New York City with nothing, nowhere to go, no money, anything, it was incredible. It was the birth team challenge, which is now, my goodness, that ministry is so extensive and has done so much. So when God speaks, he speaks with a purpose. Henry Blackaby says, what you plan to do is not important. What he plans to do where you are is very important. God speaks to us with his purpose in mind. God reveals his purposes so you will know what he plans to do. Then we can join him. But we should not go out and try to do something and ask God to bless it. Because God in his time will draw us into his purposes, will speak to us about his purpose, and we will know and he will confirm it, see. So when God spoke to Paul um, and Jan Crouch years ago in the 70s, they suffered, sacrificed, spent their own money. We will never know what that couple went through to birth that ministry, and it's now worldwide. Worldwide. We owe them a debt, see. When God spoke to them to go and buy that little station, just like he did Pat Robertson in Virginia, they had so little money. But yet he had a purpose. And it was to beam the gospel around the world. So when God speaks, he has a purpose. What is he speaking to you about? What is he giving you a desire for? Or drawing you toward? He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. That's the Holy Spirit. That's Jesus telling us that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to us about what's coming. This is a promise spoken to us. You see, the word says God will counsel us with his eye. We never have to wonder what to do as believers. We really don't. If God isn't telling you to do something different, or drawing you into something, or speaking to you and confirming it, you need to keep doing what you're doing. He's not telling you anything different. That's because he wants you to continue where you are and be faithful and safe. Lee Brady was in a job. His job was... Um, he loved it. He was the editor of Charisma for 17 years. And 
2010, God began to deal with him that he needed to leave that job and trust him to draw him into some of the kinds of ministry. Well, he didn't want to. Everything in him, he said, screamed, no, please, God. I don't want to leave this job. I love what I do, and I love reading him. Do you ever hear? Read him in the charisma. I love his one-page articles. They're so good. So, but after a while, he knew that God was calling him to step out on the water like he did Peter, and he knew it was God, so he took that step, and he risked it, and God took him, and he's using him to speak places. He's doing a lot more writing. He's doing so much more. So it's very important. The key to knowing God's voice is not a formula. I preached another word on how to hear from God. That's a powerful word. But it's not a formula. It's a relationship. The closer you are to God, the more intimate you are with God, the more you're going to hear his voice. There just aren't any shortcuts to it. It's a matter of if you really say you want it to hear from God, pursuit is the proof of desire. We can talk to the cows come home, but unless we're pursuing God, we don't really want to hear from him that much. Because he's not going to speak to everybody. He's going to speak to those who seek him with all their hearts. See, we draw nigh to God. He draws nigh to God. When we were with Pastor Harvey last a few weeks ago, um, we were sharing about the Lord and all kinds of things. And the Lord dropped a word in my heart about him. And I shared it with him. And it was a confirmation that he should write. And I said, praise God. I didn't know anything that lots of people had told you you should write. God just put that in my heart. You need to write. You know? So the Lord will speak. It's a whisper. It's not a bang. A lot of times people think, well, God's going to, a thunderbolt's coming out of heaven. That's not usually the case. It's a little whisper. It's a whisper. It's a word in our mind, you know, and we can tell that it's God. So walking in sweet daily communion with God, that we sense the Father's heart. We sense the Father's heart. Do we want to know God's heart? Because we need to hear what is important to God. I was praying and praying about, God, give me your perspective. I want your perspective, you know. And you know what God said to me? My perspective is right here. It's right in this word. Mm -hmm. Everything I believe, yes. everything I'm looking at, how I see it, how I look at it, it's all here in my It's right here. And I thought, wow, mm -hmm. that's pretty powerful. You know, my perspective on my life can be pretty tiny and puny. But God said, go out and be witnesses, you know. And the one who loves me will be loved by my father. I will also love him and reveal myself to him, Jesus said. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will reveal myself. Now, that's pretty blatant. Revealing myself is speaking, letting us know what's going on. And again, I'm going to urge and say to you, the word is the primary source for hearing from God. If someone comes and tells you something that does not line up with this word, please do not accept it. You have to know that it's from God. Henry Blackaby says, when God reveals truth by whatever means, this is an encounter with God. That is an experience of his presence and work in your life. God is the only one who can cause you to experience his presence or hear his voice. God, the Holy Spirit, speaks to us by the Spirit because he indwells us. He's going to speak to us. It's so awesome as a believer. We don't have to hope we can know what to do. We will know what to do because God leads and guides in the truth. He's promised. That's one of the things... God said, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. And that if you seek me with all your heart, you're going to find me. If you, you know, if lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge me, and I'll direct your paths. So we as believers are very, very fortunate. Because there's people out there that are hopeless. They have no sense of direction what to do in their lives. And we can know what to do. Because Jesus said, I'll reveal myself to you. Isn't that awesome? And I want to say, how hungry are you to hear God speak to you? It's a matter of relationship. God doesn't have favorites. He does not have any favorites. It's all up to us. If we want to hear from God, we have to pursue him. Because he's always pursuing us. Isn't that beautiful? He's always coming after us with great love. I love the story of Beth Moore in the airport. She was waiting for an airplane. And she noticed a man, an old man, humped over in a chair, a wheelchair, with real straggly gray hair. And the Lord drew her to look at this man. And she could feel this overwhelming sense that God wants me to do something. And she said, oh, God, please, I don't want to witness to this man in front of everybody. I, I really don't want to do this, you know. And she heard God say very clearly, I don't want you to witness to this man. I want you to brush his hair. And she thought, what? Brush his hair? That's even worse in a way. She 
go crazy, you know. And so she said, okay, God, I'm your girl. I'm going to go right over there and witness to him. I will tell him the gospel story. I'll explain it all to I am your girl. I will do this. And God said, that's not what I want you to do, Beth. I want you to brush his hair. She said, okay, God. She went over there. She knelt down beside him. And you can picture this is in a public airport. She's sitting beside this man. And she doesn't know him at all. He's going to think she's crazy, right? This is what the enemy did. You know, you can't be saying that. They don't even know you. They're going to think you're some nut, you know? And most of the time, when we speak it, it's right on the money. It's God, you know? So she went over there and she said, I'm supposed to brush your hair, but I don't have a hairbrush. Do you have a hairbrush? And he said, yes, I do. And then she began to brush his hair, and it was really tangled. It was awful. And... Um, she said as she started to brush his hair, this incredible, unbelievable love oozed out of her. She's never felt love for anybody like she felt for this man. She said it was amazing what she felt for him. And she combed out his hair, and he was telling her how he had had open-heart surgery, and he hadn't seen his bride in months, and he was going home to see her, and he was worried that his hair was such a mess. Isn't that awesome? Aww. And she was there was obedient to God because the Lord spoke to her to go and brush his hair. And when she went on the plane, he sat there and was crying. And the hostess came out, the airline hostess said, what did you say to him? What did you do? She said, I told, I brushed his hair because God told me to. And she said, God is so bossy. He tells you just what he did. <laughs> it was so funny. And she walked away crying herself, thinking, you know what, God? How many opportunities have I missed like that? How many times have I not listened? How many times have I not taken that step when you prodded me to do it? Because I thought, well, you know, it's just me. You know what the enemy does to me? He'll say, that's just you, my wife. You, know, you, you don't know that person. And it's never me. I tell you, it's always God. It's always God, and I give him all the glory for that. But a part of me doesn't want to do it. And that happened to me not long ago. Grace, this woman came in. She doesn't come there all the time. And the Lord gave me a very clear word, very brief for her. And I thought, oh, Lord, I don't know, God, is this really you? Is this me? You know, and, and I thought, well, let me wait here a little bit and see. Now, she comes up to me at the welcome time. There's a lot of people there, and then, then I'll say something to her. Well, she did. And when I moved around, she came up to me. And I said, I really feel like I have a word from the Lord for you. And I told her what it was, how God was going to vindicate her. And he had heard her cry, and he had, he had seen her pain, and now it's vindication time. Well, she messaged me a few weeks later, and she said, Norma, what was that word you gave me? And I gave it back to her because I wrote it in my journal. And she said, you won't believe the most wonderful man has come into my life, she said. Wow. And I'm so happy. She, and she told me who it was. I'm not going to say it publicly, but it's a really wonderful man. And I thought, this is God. This is so God. Because he clearly said to me, I'm going to vindicate this woman. Wow. She has been hurt. She's been beat down the way she was treated. Let me tell you, there's a God up there, and he wants to speak to you. Yeah. But we're so busy on our electronic iPhones and everything else, we have no time for God. Mm -hmm. We have got to get down to business as believers. You know, the church is lethargic. We don't, we don't want time for God. We give a little penance, you know. We give him an hour and a half on Sunday, and I'm sorry, that's not enough. If you're serious about hearing from God, and I'm telling you, it's the most exciting thing in your life. I've been hearing from God all my life, and not every day. I don't hear things all the time, but I do hear from God, and I give him all the glory. And you know what? I'm hungry. I'm very hungry to hear from God, and that's one of the reasons I think he does speak to me, because I'm so hungry. So you have to want this. You have to want, you have to dig into the word. Mostly, and most of the times God speaks to me through the rain, this word, but he does speak a lot of rain, because he wants to minister to other people. There are people out there hurting. They have no hope. And if you will ask God, he will give you a divine appointment. And, and once you step out, you have to step out. You have to take a, a risk. You're going to see he's right there. He's right there. It's not just you thinking up this stuff. God is giving you something, and you've got to be faithful to give it. So when the fourth point is when God speaks, it evokes faith in us, see? Because when we hear something, and we see God do it, just like for this woman, see? I, that was faith for me, you know? And in Matthew 8, the centurion came to Jesus asking for a servant that was paralyzed. He said, Lord, I don't deserve you to come under my roof, but just say the word. Say the word and my servant will be healed. And when Jesus heard this, he was astonished because he hadn't seen such faith in any following him. I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. That must have been so encouraging to Jesus. 
you know, because he was traveling around trying to preach the gospel. You see, if we really believe God is who he says he is, we're going to believe his word. If we believe that he speaks out of who he is, remember my first point, he speaks out of who he is. An awesome, incredible, miracle-working God. And when he speaks, there's a reason he speaks. We would take God at his word and live it out. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word. So how much of the word is in you? Just this morning, I read a scripture, and I, I didn't really have time to write it down, but I said, no, I have to write this down. It's so powerful out of Isaiah. So i got to go back and read it over and over, because it tells you who God is. See, when you read the word, and you get, you'll find out more who God is. And the more you know who he is, which I covered a lot in a message I preached this year called, um, oh, I can't think of it right now, but anybody, it'll come to me. Um, it, we talked about the attributes of God. Uh, and that's what we need to know about, see. And Jesus said to the centurion, go and it will be done as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. In the 1990s, I was a single mom, struggling very much, hurting. So I went to Fishnet, which was an outdoor uh, evangelical thing in Virginia. And I took my kids and we were there soaking in the presence of God and worshiping and hearing good speakers. And Fuchsia Pickett was the speaker that evening. Uh, she's well known. She was a Methodist professor. She since died and well known in evangelical circles. And uh, I was really happy to hear her. And she said, now I'm calling leaders for it. Anyone who feels led as a leader, I want you to come into the tent. Well, I went into the tent. And there must have been maybe 80 or 100 people in that tent. I don't know. It was a lot of people. And she called me out. I'm the only one she called out. And she held me close to her and she prayed for me. But she didn't say anything to me, but she must have sensed the call in my life. Well, before I birthed any ministry at all, I had already pushed, uh, opened my business servant leadership. God spoke to me 10 years later. Now, this happened 10 years before. See, all you people that want everything to happen just like that, it doesn't happen like that. When God speaks, you're going to have to wait for him. I should have that as a point, but I can't have any more points in this message. You know? <laughs> because when God speaks, you will have to wait. That's, that's another thing. So 10 years later, in, in my kitchen, October 25th, 2001, God said, I'm positioning you in this community for my glory. This is before I birthed our Father's Heart Marriage Works. I was teaching at the college. I was, and right after that, when 9-11 happened, the Aberdeen Chamber of Commerce asked me to come and speak. That was an honor. There were 60 people in that room. And I was scared to death, but God gave me his word. It was powerful. It was God. You see, God is going to give you a divine appointment if you're obedient. It'll scare you, but it'll be God, see. So that was just God speaking to me and putting that in my heart. And yet it took time for that to come to pass, see. Because I had to grow and it had to be. God has a time. I'm, I'm going to preach a message soon on the timing of God. So pray for me. I really feel this is a message. God wants me to preach. God's faith is a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. It comes by God's word, you see. And in, you know the story in Peter, Luke 5, how Peter uh, was, was out fishing, and Jesus said um, to him to put the net on the other side, lower it. And he, and he was exasperated. He said, Master, we told all night, called oh, nothing. But at the, on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets. You see, but when at your word, I will do it. But otherwise, I'm exasperated, and I don't want to do it. I think it's crazy, but at your word, see? So at your word. So when God speaks, we have to act on it. And see, our minds will reason and make up excuses. You know, well, I don't, I don't, I had to really get over the reasoning part of my life years ago. I would reason God out of everything, because I had this reasoning mind, and it didn't make sense to me, so that just makes sense. If God wants you to work for almost nothing, you must be stupid or crazy. You know, God will ask you to do things that seem really weird, you know. And we, we just can't fathom God. But he'll take care of you, believe me. So I just, you have to, you can't reason God out way. You've got to believe him because when he speaks because of who he is, you have faith to believe his word. If you're in the word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. See, faith put into action is a natural outcome of trusting God's word. We can only trust God to the extent that we know him. And you've heard me say that many times. So if you want more faith, you have to know God more. That's all it is. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. So far we've talked about when God speaks, he speaks from who he is. Number two, when God speaks, he speaks with a purpose. 
Number three, God speaks, we need to obey and meditate on what he said. And number four, when God speaks his word, it evokes faith in us. Number five, when God speaks, his word is already done. It's already done. This is a very important point. You have to believe this. God has told me things that didn't happen for 20, 25 years, and they're happening. Some of them are happening, some of them still have to happen. But when God says it, it's done. It doesn't matter what it seems like, looks like. God spoke to Abraham and have a son. 25 years later, he had a son. And what does the word say? Abram hoped against hope. He hoped against everything. He didn't know what to believe. But he knew that God was able to perform his work. You see, God has power to perform his work. So if you know him and who he is, you can believe him to have the power to do what he says he will do. It's a matter of us knowing God enough to trust him, see? So when God speaks and says something, it's done. It's finished. In his mind, it's already accomplished. Whatever he's going to do in your life is done. You just have to be willing and obedient. Now you have to trust him. And you have to wait for his timing. And we have to do our part. When Jesus spoke to the fig tree, whether he spoke to peace be to the storm, it was done. When he raised three people from the dead by speaking to them. He spoke to demons to be released. See, he healed the Roman officer's servant by speaking, just as I said. You see, God is not a man that he would lie. He should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Oh, absolutely not. He does not. And in Acts 27, we have a story of Paul being on this ship, and there was a terrible nor'easter storm. They threw everything overboard. They were going to die, it looked like. But an angel of the Lord came to Paul, and he said to him, Now I urge you, he said that you would not die. And let me read this. Now I urge you to take courage, because there will be no loss of any of your lives, Paul told the men, but only on the ship. For this night, an angel of God I belong to and serve stood by me and said, Don't be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And look, God has graciously given you all those who are sailing with you. Isn't that awesome? Take courage then, because I believe that, that I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. This angel spoke. I mean, we're talking a storm so bad they could all be dead. They'd thrown everything over. It looked like they were not any going to survive. And Paul was at the point of throwing me over, you know. But God said, no, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of you because he had already ordained for Paul to go to Rome. He was to stand before Caesar. Whatever God's purpose, he's going to do it. So, you know, I mean, Jesus is in the boat. It's not going to go down under because he's got to go to the cross, you know. Whatever God said is going to happen, it's going to happen. You may go through hell and high water, and you may not understand any of it, but it will definitely happen. Amen. So stay close to God because he'll comfort you, strengthen you, and give you the grace to whatever's happening and how many years you have to wait, you see. So I, I love that because he said to them, now courage, take courage because whatever God said, he's going to do it. So when he speaks through this word, that if you seek first my kingdom, everything you need will be added unto you. That's the word of the Lord. You don't have to wonder if that's true. It is true. He said, give and it will be given unto you. That's the word of the Lord. Yes. So that word is true. We don't have to wonder if it's true. It is true. You see, so God is not a man that he would live. Now hear the word of the Lord. So shall my word be, God says, it goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void without producing any effect. But it will accomplish that which I sent it to. So whatever I've set it to do, it's going to happen. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. That's power. God Almighty said to the prophet Isaiah, Now hear the word of the Lord, that my word will come to pass, and it will not be of no effect. That's powerful. Who can speak and have it happen if the Lord has not decreed it? Lamentations 3.37. But if God says it, you can take it to the back. You can take it to the back. You may wonder at times, is this ever going to happen? But believe me, it will. In God's timing, it will happen, and he will bring it. So we must be fully persuaded like Abraham. He did not waver in unbelief at God's promise, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. He did not waver. He did not struggle. Why? Because he knew God. He knew God. He had visited God. God had visited him. He knew God. See? Because he was fully convinced that what God has promised, he was able to perform his word. Is your God big enough to perform his word to you? Is your concept of God big enough? Is he great enough in your mind that he can do this? 
So when God speaks, it's done. It's finished. It's over. It's already happened. We don't need to strain, struggle. Uh, we are going to sometimes struggle in the waiting. We have to wait. But when God says it, it's done. It will happen. 25 years later, Sarah, at a very old age, way past menopause, birthed the baby. A miracle of God. Because God said it. And he's going to do whatever he said. It's amazing. In 2007, God emphasized to me we were going through a very severe trial financially for several years. We barely existed because of the ministry. And God said to me, Norma, I don't want you to worry about finances. I want you to seek me and do the work of the ministry, and finances are out here. They're my problem. They're not your problem. You know? So God kept providing. In the year 2008, $6,000 worth of asbestos money came into my husband that year. And that's how we lived that and what other provision God made. So God said, you do the work of the ministry. I'll take care of you. He's been doing that for many, many years. And I praise God and give him all the glory. So just want you to really understand that when God speaks, it's from who he is. And when he says it, it's done. It's finished. Write it down. Write it down. If it's truly God and you're not sure it's a confirmation, ask for one. How to hear from God is another message I have that will help you with some of this. When God speaks, my last point, we need to speak what he speaks. Even when we don't see it, doesn't seem like it's ever going to happen. We need to speak what God said. I love the story in the Old Testament when Balak wanted Balaam to uh, curse the prophets and to cause problems and curse the people of Israel. Balaam said, even if Balak gave me his palace filled with silver and gold, I could not do anything great or small or go beyond the command of my Lord God. And he went on to say, Balaam replied, but I can say just nothing. But I can say just anything. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth is what he meant. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. And that's how I do. We speak the word of the Lord. We speak what he says. We go what he says. Jesus said I do only what the Father has called me. I go what he says. I speak what he says. I'm about the Father's business. And that's what we're supposed to be down here. We're not just supposed to be enjoying life. We're supposed to be about the Father's business. When we speak, when we need to speak what God speaks to Job, but he is unchangeable God, and who can turn him? And what he wants to do, that he does. For he performs that which he has planned for me. And of such uh, matters, he is mindful. Is that powerful? Mm -hmm. Of such matters, God is mindful. Job 23, 13. He does whatever he wants. He's unchangeable. He's God Almighty. You know? And Jesus declared, I did not speak of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Isn't that powerful? Whatever I say. I wish we could say that. So whatever we say, we hope the Lord put a guard over our mouth and we'll speak the positive and the word of the Lord. It's what God gives me to say, you see. The reign of word is revealed by the Holy Spirit. Then we speak the word by faith until we see it. We praise God and we speak it. Once we're certain, that it's God has spoken to us, whether it's through a rain of word from here, by the Spirit. We translate his purpose into the physical world by speaking it forth. Does that make sense? We translate it into the spiritual realm. See, our words translate the will of God from the invisible kingdom into the visible situation that we're in. We can do that. That's a part of the kingdom of God. We do this with our mouths, speaking that mountains will come down and diseases will be destroyed. And we spoke to storms. Recently, that horrible storm was supposed to be so much work. But people were speaking to that storm. We were taking authority over that storm. We take the authority God has given us. Jesus got up in the boat and said, peace be still, and the storm stopped. We have authority, brothers and sisters. We need to take that authority. We should be adamantly declaring, our God is the El Shaddai. He's more than enough. I'm like an olive tree, a green olive tree flourishing in the house of God. These are things we need to declare. Because of what God already said in his word. He says the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. that becomes brighter and brighter into the full dawn of day. Now I love that scripture. That was given to me once by a friend that was a minister. And it surely came to pass. It was powerful. Surely goodness and mercy. I've been saying this. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life as you've trusted in him and you've, and you've had him as your savior. 
So are you speaking the problem or the solution? Are we speaking what God says or are we just speaking what we feel? Which is sometimes very negative. So we need to remember these points that when God speaks, he speaks from who he is. He speaks for us to obey. It evokes faith in us. He speaks with a purpose. And he speaks, and we need to speak what he says. That when he says something, it's going to happen. Yes. You know, even if you don't believe, God is going to bring you on his word. But you have to do your part and be obedient. But believe me, God is not confined to your own belief. <laughs> he can do whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants. He can move people in circumstances way beyond what we can even imagine. So what response do I want from us? That we'll pray and be hungry to hear God's voice. Because God is not a respecter person. You can hear his voice just like I do and many others. But you will take God on his words because it will never return unto him void. And when God speaks to us, it's not about us. It's about a purpose he has to use us for. It's not about this meism culture that we live in. God is going to make you rich and all this. It's about you being used for God. That's what it's about. It's really not about the other. You know? And remember, pursuit is the proof of desire. So you have to examine ourselves. How much do we want to hear from God? You, know? you come to know God's voice through a relationship. It's not a formula. It's through a relationship with Him. Be assured that when God speaks, it's already done. I love that. It's already finished. It's already done. That you will confidently proclaim his word, logos, and rhema word. And that God's word will never return unto him void. It doesn't matter what it is. It will never return unto him void. And I just praise God for that. Such a powerful word of when God speaks to us. And he's always speaking to me through the word. But I'm in it every day. I'm in the word every day. Some. Because it's my life. I eat this word. I drink this word. I meditate on this word and I quote this word. And there's power in that, brothers and sisters. You know, we want more power and we want to hear God, but we got to pay the price. The price is our relationship to God and spending time with Him so that He can speak a word and season to you. Because He is no respecter of persons and He will speak to you just as He speaks to others. So tonight we thank you, Lord, for your word. So powerful. We thank you for your love for us, your deep, deep love for us. And we thank you, Lord, that you do speak to us, that you've given us the word of God, that you do speak a word in season, but you also speak by the precious Holy Spirit. And tonight, Lord, I pray you will cause a hunger to arise in people that are here, in people that are, will hear this message, Lord, that they'll seek you with their whole hearts to hear your voice. What is? What are you doing in our lives? What are you going to do? What do you want them to do? They can know this, Lord, and I just thank you for that. I thank you that you said you'll confide in us, Jesus. You'll tell us things, Holy Spirit. To you be all the glory and the praise for that, Father. May this word pierce our hearts, Lord, for what we need to do to hear more from you, Lord. to hunger and thirst after you, Lord, to hear the word of the Lord. I just thank you, God, for this opportunity. I pray you will bless our community church, our partnership with Pastor Alan Gorman, you will strengthen this gathering here, Lord, tomorrow morning. May they send you powerfully, Lord, and may you be a blessing, Father. Glorify your name, I pray, in all of this, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.